This is an introductory course on quantum computation. It is a multidisciplinary subject. Everybody may not have the necessary background to all its aspects. There will be some physics, some computer science, some algebra and some amount of engineering. I will cover all those things mixed together. For those who know one or the other topic, that might be a little boring to listen to once again. But there will be others who may not know everything about it. And I will spend the effort to make them understand the basics. That also comes with some groundwork for me to do because I am a physicist. There is no prerequisite for the course. Whatever is needed, I will explain from scratch. But I will assume that essentially what I describe is right. And if you don't understand it, it is your job to ask questions. In particular, I won't bother much about what someone else has written somewhere else. Let me begin with our intuitive understanding of what a computer is. It is a device or a processor denoted by a box here. There is some input which is manipulated by certain instructions we provide and then there is some output. In this process we may use some ready-made libraries or lookup tables. We can compare this description to what routinely happens in many physical processes. There is an initial state, then there are some interactions which lead to some final state. We don't call every physical process a computation. But for every computation, an underlying physical process is necessary. The point to note is that the mathematical description of what goes on in a computer needs physical hardware to implement the task. Whether certain abstract mathematical operations are possible or not ultimately depends on whether there exists or not some suitable physical hardware to implement them. In other words, the potentialities and the limitations of a computer depends on the available hardware and we can try to figure out the possibilities. At the fundamental level, the number of physical interactions are not many. There are only four. The strong and the weak interactions do not play much role in our familiar devices. Gravity does have an influence on the device operations, but essentially as a fixed background. Most of the time we use electromagnetism in its varied forms to control and manipulate the dynamics of our devices. So the tasks we can perform with a computer are essentially limited by the manner in which we can use various aspects of electromagnetic interactions. Now I can define what a computer is. It is a device that 
purposefully processes meaningful information. As is common with definitions, one word is explained using many words and then we need to explain those many words. The many words may need even more words for their explanation. The process stops when we somehow accept the meaning of many words through some basic intuition. Keep in mind again that all our intuition would ultimately be rooted in our past experiences in our physical world. In this definition, information is the abstract quantity represented by some mathematical variables. Processing is the manipulation of physical states by a device. The meaning is provided by a map between the mathematical variables and the physical states. And the purpose is contained in the algorithmic design of the instructions. For example, in our Boolean logic based computers, the mathematical variables are 0 and 1. The physical states are the off and on states of a transistor. The map associates 0 and 1 with off and on respectively and the algorithmic instructions manipulate the values 0 and 1. It is a wonderful property of nature that we can take some physical properties or observations and represent them by abstract mathematical variables by designing a suitable map. We can then work on the mathematical variables without any reference to their physical origin and after carrying out desired transformations, insert the physical meaning back to interpret the result. Such a strategy is highly useful. It separates software from hardware. It is indeed the surprising strength of mathematics. As an illustration, suppose I see a 12-13 digit number. It could be someone's mobile phone number, someone's bank account number, or even an ISBN book code. But without worrying about what the number represents, I can copy it or communicate it or perform some other transformation on it. After that, I can add back its interpretation and then make appropriate use of it. Thus, one can take some form of physical data and convert it into an abstract mathematical form, the information, by removing all its features of physical realization. The abstract information can then be processed by rules of mathematics, expressed in terms of a language and its grammar. Afterwards, the physical interpretation can be added back to the mathematical result to obtain practically useful knowledge. All this may happen in our head or it may require use of a device, but it is possible. We must keep in mind that learning abstract mathematical concepts needs the support of their physical realization in some form or other. 
children learn the numbers 1 2 3 and so on we all did maybe we used fingers maybe we used blocks maybe the teacher showed us some chairs but at some stage something clicked in our heads that the numbers are not the fingers or the blocks or the chairs but an abstract concept representing quantity of objects that's mathematics it is different from how we learned to identify a chair or a door or a person by direct association of a word with the corresponding physical object now we can state what we want from a computer it should be a general information processing system it may not be restricted to solving only one particular problem although special purpose devices do exist and we use them also but it should be able to tackle many different problems that are in some sense in the same class that is all problems which can be expressed using the same mathematical language of course what we can do and cannot do will always be restricted by the laws of physics in addition we want the design of such a system to be efficient that is an optimization exercise we want to make things better and better there is no ready made prescription for how to do that we can play around with options and find out that this one is better than that one our success may depend on the problem and our past experiences can help still what we find may not be the best someone else may find something better in future but we try to do as well as we can now what are the things that we try to optimize all our criteria come down to minimization of some physical resources such as time space energy etc we want the program to run quickly we want to keep the required processor size and memory small we want the computer to use less power maybe you can add some more such statements but they all amount to reducing some physical quantity or the other the criteria for optimization can be further divided in two parts software and hardware what is optimized in software the task is specified using some language and executed using some algorithm the mathematical ingredients can be easily counted and quantified how many variables are there how many instruction steps are executed how much memory is needed and so on what is optimized in hardware that depends on how the mathematical variables and operations are mapped to the physical components for example what is the component size millimeter micrometer or something else 
which components are neighbors to each other how much energy is consumed in a particular operation and so on this can be quantified as well overall optimization has to consider both software and hardware aspects if you look at only one of them it is not enough i want to point out that ready made lookup tables are also used in certain algorithms they are a different type of resource the computer science label for that is an oracle which comes from greek mythology when the greek kings or leaders wanted to make some important decision they used to consult high priestesses of certain temples the high priestess would go in a trance and answer something often using generic vague statements the kings and leaders would interpret them in a suitable manner and take appropriate action without worrying about how the answer was generated we have our own version in india of such a process consultation of the astrologers we don't worry about the gobbledygook answers to our questions how they were generated we can count such resources the ready made lookup tables as the number of times of consultations now we can look at the whole hierarchy of operations that connect software to hardware while solving a problem the implementation starts with some data a preprocessor converts that in some particular way into certain mathematical representation this conversion and the program instructions that follow often use a high level language and then a compiler converts the instructions into a low level assembly code there is considerable variety in the choice of high level languages often due to historical choices made by someone while the low level expressions have much smaller vocabulary after that the assembly code is converted into machine code which is actually direct instructions for the hardware to implement on top of all this structure is a programmer who decides what problem is to be solved in what manner using appropriate instructions the pattern is that high level description is dominated by software the low level description is tied to the hardware and there can be many layers of translation in between the software flexibility at high level allows one to address many different types of problems with the same fixed hardware but at the lowest level machine code level the physical components of the hardware must carry both the information and its interpretation just think of how a child learns the language first time there is nothing to translate to and the support of physical objects is a must to formulate the necessary concept we all went through that this hierarchical structure is not specific to computers 
all living organisms have it too indeed computers have been designed and constructed to augment the capabilities of our brains let me point out the similarities living organisms receive environmental signals the data through their senses the senses process them into a form which can be analyzed by the brain this analysis and subsequent instructions issued by the brain take place by electrochemical signal the nervous system carries the signals back and forth based on the signals cells take specific actions using proteins and enzymes that is the machine code and the overall program is controlled by the genetic information sitting in the dna there are differences too even with all the developments in science and technology computers are not like brains brains use experience take initiatives and figure out new ways of doing various things there are enough unanswered questions regarding how that happens and you can wonder about that in your free time the important lesson here is the direct low level mapping between mathematical variables and physical states there the high level variety is not available for example we want to work with zero and one of boolean logic but we, all we have are electrical circuits this circuit cannot interpret zero and one but they can implement off and on so we can directly associate zero with off and one with on that's it the job is done ultimately this is how low level mapping determines what problem can be solved and what cannot be solved now i can return to the question of optimization and the trade off involved of course we want to minimize physical resources but every physical system suffers from undesirable noise and fluctuations that is thermodynamics and there is no way to completely bypass it these fluctuations produce errors in the results and we need to minimize them as well to maintain clarity the point to note is that there is a generic conflict between minimization of resources and minimization of errors consider a simple example i said something and you did not understand it maybe i mumbled maybe you didn't hear it properly what happens then you ask me a question can you explain again i repeat what i said perhaps with some variation of course with multiple such trials my message goes through but i have wasted resources because of not having enough clarity such situations are common when i do something loose and fast in order to save resources the error rate goes up too and there is a penalty for that in practice we generally decide the extent of error tolerable in a given physical task which is always possible in any physical problem and then minimize the resources accordingly such a strategy is somehow built in our experience i mentioned the example of speaking a language now suppose i am talking to a baby 
then suddenly the language changes. Nobody actually taught us, but we do it intuitively. The fact is that a baby's comprehension system is not well developed and there is a high transmission loss in communication. Then what do we do to achieve clarity? The number of words in our vocabulary go down and the ones that remain become full of repetitive sounds. Mama, Papa and so on. It does not matter whether the language is English, Hindi, Tamil or Arabic. The same pattern is everywhere. The repetitive sounds get the communication job done by spending extra resources to compensate for high error rate. Once the baby grows up and the comprehension ability increases, we switch back to our routine language. That is life. This is a very important point. The framework of computer science continuously struggles with the conflicting criteria of resources and errors. We need to estimate the error rate. We want to estimate the resources and then find the best trade-off between the two. We will have enough exercises of this type in dealing with various things that will come in the course. That's about as much as I want to say today.